Exciting times are ahead as SpaceX enters the home stretch for Starship's third integrated flight test. As we speak, the launch vehicle and launch pad are undergoing their final preparations, while the tank farm receives crucial upgrades. Notably, SpaceX has already kicked off testing for the fifth integrated flight test of the Starship. Join us as we delve into these latest updates. After acing the crucial static fire test campaign, SpaceX has nailed all prerequisites for the upcoming third integrated flight test. Super Heavy Booster 10, after its successful 33-engine static fire test, was removed from the orbital launch mount on December 30. Three days later, on January 2, the booster left the launch site and moved towards the production site for final launch preparations. Upon arrival at the production site, the booster made its way into the Mega Bay, the prime spot for booster stacking and processing operations. The booster was later lifted with the help of a bridge crane and placed atop a processing stand. Early Thursday morning, Starship 28 was removed from its test stand to send it back to the production site. Later, teams removed all six lifting points on the nose cone of the ship. The hooks are no longer required, as the ship is not required to be lifted and put back on its test stand again. The ship left the launch site the same day afternoon, and after an hour-long journey, it arrived at the production site. The ship then entered the high bay to get ready for the impending flight test. In the coming days, Ship 28 and Booster 10 will undergo a rigorous final processing phase, essential for their readiness in the upcoming third integrated flight test. This comprehensive process involves an array of meticulous system checks, detailed engine inspections, and thorough assembly verifications. Every component, from engines to structural elements, undergoes stringent examination to guarantee flawless performance during the imminent flight. Thermal protection system tiles will also be installed on the ship wherever they are left out. Once all these critical procedures are completed, the ship and booster will return to the launch site, setting the stage for the highly anticipated flight test. However, SpaceX still needs to obtain a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is currently investigating the cause of the November mishap. The FAA will issue a permit once it is satisfied that SpaceX has taken the necessary corrective actions to ensure safety and compliance. As per Starbase General Manager Catherine Leaders, SpaceX is targeting the first quarter of 2024 for Starship's third integrated flight test. However, the company has yet to disclose the flight plans. As per an FCC filing, the flight profile for Starship's third integrated flight is almost similar to the previous two launches. The mission involves liftoff from Starbase, followed by stage separation, where the booster will make its return to Earth, landing in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, Starship will ascend to an altitude of 235 kilometers and execute a powered targeted landing in the Indian Ocean. Since the second flight test was not entirely successful, SpaceX may alter the plans and follow the same Flight 2 mission profile for the third mission. If that's the case, instead of the Indian Ocean, the ship will splash down in the Pacific Ocean, near Kauai. SpaceX plans to demonstrate high data rate communication with the vehicles via Starlink satellites during the third mission. Also, there is an unconfirmed report that they might conduct a tank-to-tank -tank propellant transfer demonstration mid-flight. SpaceX's propellant transfer demonstration, funded by a $53.2 million NASA contract, requires moving 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between tanks inside Starship. Liquid oxygen will be transferred between the main tank and the header tank, while the Starship is coasting in orbit. Following a successful tank-to-tank -tank demonstration, SpaceX will attempt a ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer between two starships connected in low Earth orbit. These demonstration missions will give NASA and SpaceX enough data to improve propellant transfer technology, which is crucial for the agency's Artemis missions. Starship 28 tested its payload bay door twice after its static fire tests last month. The rationale behind those tests remains undisclosed, leaving the purpose open to speculation. As of right now, there's no solid evidence that Starship 28's mission involves deploying Starlink satellites to orbit. However, plans can swiftly evolve, and SpaceX might opt to deploy either dummy or operational satellites during the upcoming flight test. It's important to note that all these speculations surrounding the next mission plans are not officially confirmed and are purely based on conjecture. SpaceX's official announcements will provide accurate and detailed insights into the actual plans and objectives for the upcoming mission, offering a clearer perspective on what to expect. Following the removal of Booster 10, the team swiftly set up scaffolding on the launch mount to initiate the final round of work to prepare the structure for the launch. This comprehensive process involves checks on the 20 booster hold-down clamps, ensuring their optimum functionality during launch. Moreover, the quick disconnect ports, responsible for delivering gases for the outer 20 booster engine startup, and the main booster quick disconnect mechanism, will be thoroughly examined for seamless operation. 
These meticulous checks and adjustments play a crucial role in ensuring the flawless operation of the launch mount on launch day. Work is also underway to prepare the launch tower and its arm for the upcoming full stack. SpaceX remains committed to ongoing upgrades at the tank farm, especially the liquid oxygen side of the farm. One of the pumps that pumps liquid oxygen towards the launch pad was replaced with a brand new one lately. These pumps are crucial components that ensure the uninterrupted flow of propellant to the launch vehicle, playing a pivotal role in maintaining the consistency and reliability of the fuel supply during the launch sequence. Work to bring the newly installed horizontal propellant storage tanks online is also in progress. At the time of making this video, a crane was attached to the unused water storage tank at the tank farm to dismantle it. Eventually, SpaceX will decommission all the vertical tanks, and in the future, the horizontal tanks will store propellants required for operations at the launch site. It's currently unclear whether SpaceX plans to operationalize the horizontal tanks before the next flight test. Several days ago, SpaceX moved Starship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12 to the Massey's test site near Starbase for cryogenic proof tests. Ship 30 underwent a cryo-proof test on Wednesday, January 3. Both the liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks of the ship were completely filled during the test, which lasted for more than 10 hours from start to finish. The ship test stand has pistons installed to mimic the force of the Raptor engines during cryo-proof tests. More Ship 30 tests can be expected in the coming days, along with cryo-proof tests of Booster 12. Apart from ensuring the reliability of the plumbing, cryo-proof tests provide engineers with the valuable data they need to determine whether a rocket can endure various kinds of stresses during flight. After cryo-proof tests, the booster in the ship will return to the Starbase production site for engine installation. Later they will be subjected to static fire testing. As per current developments, Ship 30 will pair up with Booster 12 for the fifth integrated flight test. However, plans might change in the future. Last month, Starship 29 was moved from the high bay to the new mega bay under construction for further processing. The ship was recently lifted and placed atop an engine installation stand for the installation of all its six Raptors. Ship 29, which has already completed its cryo-proof testing, will proceed to static fire testing after engine installation. Booster 11, believed to be the pair of Ship 29, is currently inside the mega bay, waiting for engine installation. As per current developments, it looks like Ship 29 will pair up with Booster 11 for the fourth integrated flight test. Booster 13's fully stacked liquid oxygen tank section is inside the mega bay along with Booster 11. Starship 31 which has been resting at the Rocket Garden for the past few weeks, was brought back to the production site early Thursday morning and later moved into the high bay. The ship received its aft flaps on Friday, January 5th. Starship 32 is also inside the high bay, undergoing final preparations ahead of cryo-proof tests. In short, SpaceX's production site is buzzing with activity, with a lineup of ships and boosters at various developmental stages. Given the current pace of progress, it seems likely that all these vehicles will be launched by year's end, promising an exciting future for SpaceX and Starship. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. India began 2024 with the launch of the country's first X-ray observatory into space aboard its polar satellite launch vehicle. The PSLVC-58 mission lifted off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center on January 1, carrying the ExpoSat spacecraft into orbit. It was the 60th flight of the four-stage PSLV rocket, which uses a mixture of solid and liquid propellant on different stages. The launch also marked the first time an orbital mission has lifted off on New Year's Day at its launch site. About 22 minutes after liftoff, the rocket's upper stage deployed the ExpoSat spacecraft into a 650-km near-equatorial low-Earth orbit, with an inclination of 6 degrees. The 469-kg satellite will carry out X-ray polarimetry measurements of various interstellar sources. Light from the Sun and other stars is said to be unpolarized as it oscillates in all directions. But sometimes light or electromagnetic waves are produced in a highly organized fashion, oscillating only in one direction, known as polarized waves. Making measurements of polarized X-rays emitted by sources such as neutron stars, pulsars, black holes, and supernovae helps astronomers understand the complex processes that take place within these phenomena. To gather data, ExpoSat uses two primary instruments. Pollux, or the polarimeter instrument in X-rays, and Expect, or the X-ray spectroscopy and timing. Pollux is an X-ray polarimeter designed to measure the level and angle of polarization of X-rays emitted by interstellar sources. Expect would observe several types of sources and can provide fast timing and good spectroscopic resolution in longer wavelength X-rays. The ExpoSat mission is designed to last at least five years, during which it will study about 50 so-called cosmic sources. 
After deploying ExpoSat on Monday, PSLV's upper stage lowered its orbit to about 350 kilometers and passivated itself to serve as an orbiting experimental platform, known as POEM. The PSLV Orbital Experimental Module, or POEM, carries 10 non-deployable research payloads from ISRO and the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center. The POEM platform is expected to operate for about a month, conducting experiments in microgravity conditions. SpaceX kicked off 2024 with two back-to-back -back orbital launches. The company launched its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket on a Starlink satellite mission on Tuesday, January 2, from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. As planned, after stage separation, the rocket's first stage came back to Earth and made a vertical landing on a drone ship stationed in the Pacific Ocean off the California coast. It was the first launch and landing for this particular booster. Meanwhile, the upper stage continued carrying the 21 Starlink satellites into orbit. The satellites were deployed into a 530-kilometer circular low-Earth orbit more than an hour after liftoff. Six of the 21 Starlink satellites deployed on Tuesday carried a payload that could provide connectivity for most 4G mobile devices when in range. According to SpaceX, this direct-to-cell capability will enable mobile network operators around the world to provide seamless global access to texting, calling, and browsing anywhere on Earth. SpaceX obtained approval from U.S. regulators last month to test the satellites in partnership with T-Mobile. Over the next six months, the company anticipates launching approximately 840 direct-to-cell capable satellites, transmitting 4G connectivity to around 2,000 unmodified smartphones. Additional launches will continue after that period. SpaceX plans to start enabling texting from space this year, with voice and data connectivity coming in 2025. SpaceX launched a Swedish broadband satellite on the company's second mission of 2024. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying the Ovsin 3 satellite lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on January 3. After separating from the rocket's upper stage, the booster returned to a nearby landing zone around eight minutes after liftoff. It was the 10th flight for this particular Falcon 9's first stage booster. After around 38 minutes, Ovsin 3 broke free from the rocket's upper stage and used its onboard electric propulsion system to begin its voyage towards a geostationary orbit approximately 36,000 kilometers above Earth. The 1,500 kilograms Ovsin 3 broadband internet satellite, built by Maxer Technologies, is operated by Swedish telecommunications company Ovsin. Ovsin, founded in 2006, provides broadband services mainly for government customers across the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Africa by leasing satellite capacity from third parties such as Intelsat. The operator sees opportunities to expand their capabilities and offer a new service for government customers within the European market with its own satellite, Ovsin 3. Ovsin 3's connectivity services are slated to begin by the middle of the year. The launch of the Ovsin 3 satellite continues what SpaceX hopes will be a historically busy year for the company. SpaceX set a record last year with 98 orbital missions, including two test flights of the Starship rocket. As per SpaceX Vice President of Launch, Kaiko Donchev, the company is targeting to launch 144 times in 2024. India's space agency, ISRO, announced on January 2 that it will launch a large communications satellite later this year on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. As per reports, New Space India Limited, or NSIL, the commercial arm of ISRO, signed a contract with SpaceX for the Falcon 9 launch of the GSAT-20 communications satellite in the second quarter of 2024. However, the terms of the deal and launch cost have not yet been disclosed. GSAT-20 is the second demand-driven communications satellite funded and operated exclusively by NSIL. It will provide high-throughput connectivity across India with 48 gigabits per second of capacity. GSAT-20 has been under development for several years and was initially supposed to be launched on ISRO's geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III rocket. NSIL did not provide a reason for using SpaceX to launch the satellite instead, however, the press release noted the spacecraft has a mass of 4,700 kilograms. The maximum payload that the Mark III rocket can place into a geostationary transfer orbit is 4,000 kilograms. GSAT-20 will be the first Indian communications satellite to be launched on an American rocket in more than three decades. Three of the first four InSat communications satellites were launched aboard Delta rockets and the Space Shuttle between 1982 and 1992. Since then, India has relied exclusively on its own vehicles and the Ariane family of rockets for satellite launches. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.